What's going on guys, TaxHD here, finally bringing you a new franchise mode series, and this is an Atlanta Thrashers franchise, as you can see by the title of this video, and what's on screen right now. And opposed to doing an expansion draft or something like that, I'm actually using the Atlanta Thrashers alumni that still exist in this game, uh, trying to build a team around them, finally bring a Stanley Cup back to Atlanta. Um, the goal actually is to try and win a cup before Kovalchuk retires. Um, he's the all-time leader in points for the franchise, so we'd love to get him a Stanley Cup. Uh, so first off, guys, I guess I'll show you the logo for this team. Um, obviously, did my best here to kind of recreate the logo. Um, we have the Thrasher there, whatever kind of bird you want to call that. Uh, pretty similar colors. Obviously, it's not going to work out quite the same based on where we have to put the colors with the custom logo, but um, obviously you got the navy blue and light blue there on the outside. The kind of brownish there with the yellow uh, for the bird. So I think it looks pretty decent, honestly. Um, hopefully you guys like it. It is our main logo. Uh, secondary marks here. This is actually one of the alternate logos they used. Uh, we use it for our third jersey as well. Uh, you guys can see it there compared. It actually is pretty similar. And then finally we have this just other eagle or bird, whatever you want to call it, that I'm probably just going to use on, I think, the pants and a couple shoulder patches. Speaking of the jerseys, I'll show that to you guys right now. Hopefully you like them. Uh, so the first one here, the home jersey. Um, I went for that light blue jersey they were using. Um, I think that was like the last season they existed as a franchise. Um, now obviously we can't have where like the one sleeve um, is all navy blue, the other sleeve is only light blue. So had to do the best what we had. Um, still I think it looks pretty sharp. Don't think there's any team in the NHL right now that has like a light blue jersey like this. I could be wrong. I think maybe the Winnipeg alternate, but that's about it. Um, so right there you guys have a look at the home jersey. Um, on the uh, shoulder that you can see is like the, the V thing. I'm not really sure we'd call it the wings I guess. Uh, right there's a look at the back of the jersey. So again, uh, I think it's pretty sharp looking. Uh, next year, the away. So this is kind of like this is their basic jersey. When most people think of the Atlanta Thrashers, this is probably the jersey that comes to mind. So um, again, you can see the logo looks pretty good there on white. Uh, we have that little skinny blue stripe, the blue sleeves where it's like indented with the white. So that's real. Uh, pants look good. Sock. Uh, the design's not quite perfect. I couldn't actually find the design they used in game. So just kind of had to make do. Right, there's a look at the back again. So honestly, I think the away jersey probably turned out the best of the three. And then finally here with the alternate jersey. So you guys can see what I was going for here. Um, obviously the other alternate there that they used. I'm um, using that uh, secondary logo as the main. Um, lots of reds in this one on like the shoulders, sleeves, and socks. So oh, this one's pretty cool. Um, obviously, I'm probably a fan more of the home and away than this one, but uh, no reason not to like mix it up. As you can see, like all three jerseys are actually quite different. Like you got the navy blue and red. Uh, the white and then the home which is a light blue so Atlanta had quite a variety of jerseys to choose from there uh, so looking at the details really quickly obviously Atlanta Thrashers I don't think that's actually pretty cool Thrashers is available as a play-by-play -play team name so uh, if we're in game seven the Stanley Cup final uh, playing like the last minute or whatever we'll actually hear Thrashers um, from the commentary all that stuff there's not really gonna matter as we're not playing owner mode but did fill it out for you guys um, next year I'll actually show you the mascot completely forgot I made a mascot honestly I think it looks pretty good compared to their real life mascot they had so you guys can be the judge. There he is. Uh, so I believe his name is Thrash. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, his name's Thrash. Uh, where's number zero? Right there, you guys can see the back of his jersey there. Um, obviously, he's rocking the home. Um, I think the, the mascot here actually looks pretty similar. Unfortunately, there's not too many options of creating the mascot, but like I was saying, I still think it turned out pretty well. And next, I'll actually show you guys what this roster is looking like. Um, as I was saying, we're using all Atlanta Thrashers alumni for this team, so I'll show you just all the players we have to work with. Once we get into the franchise, I'll actually show you guys the lineup. Again, bi the big goal for this is to bring a Stanley Cup back to Atlanta, but... Um, the secondary goal, I guess, would be to win one before Kolchuk retires. Also, would like to actually have a few of these players still on the roster. So, best player there, obviously, Blake Wheeler, 89 overall, an absolute stud right now in the NHL. Uh, Justin Bufflin, second best, so obviously there will be a lot of Winnipeg Jets players, but honestly, there's not that many. Uh, Winnipeg's definitely became a new team since, you know, relocating. Um, after that, Ilya Kolchuk there again, all-time leading scorer for the franchise. Would love to uh, get him the Stanley Cup uh, before he retires, 35 years old. Probably only gives us like five years max to do that for Kolchuk, but if not, hopefully we can win a Stanley Cup after that. Um, Vander Kane there, obviously. Brian Little, Brayden Coborn, um, Enstrom, who's actually playing for Moto now. Zach Bogoshin, um, Hainsey, Chris Kunitz. You can see already the talent's starting to drop off quite a bit. Um, Letting in there's our starter. He was actually a second overall pick. Not sure if you guys knew that back in 2002. Um, so he'll be the starter for the first season. Obviously, we're going to be trying to do bad anyway. Uh, get a high pick. Uh, Danny Healy. So I actually uh, recreated Danny Healy in-game. Made him a 78. I think that's pretty fair. You guys can let me know. Um, Bob Six potential there. He's 37 years old. Basically, we're only going to have uh, the all-star for one season, but that's okay. You can see his stats here. Not that fast. Okay hands. Pretty solid shot still. Uh, defensively, 
Physically, it's pretty average. I think it's honestly fair for Heatley if he were to come back. So I felt like we couldn't do this without Danny Heatley. Uh, we also have McCarthy there, so that's a bad contract we have to deal with. But I figured he's an alumni. It'll make it a bit more fun. Plus, as you guys can see at the bottom, we do have like 21 million in cap space. Uh, McKenzie, Thorburn, Slater there. Marion Hosa even. Unfortunately, he's a 70 now. Uh, Santola, Klingberg. Uh, Pearson Wenzel is actually our backup goalie. Um, Perrin there is, I think, 42 oldest guy on this team. He'll just be in the AHL anyway. I just wanted to add every single player I could, essentially. Uh, Machek, Bergfors, Pascal, and then Samulov. So that is it, guys, for the Thrashers alumni. Obviously, we're also going to have some AHL players on top of this, but I'm making sure we don't get any good AHL players. So pretty much this franchise is going to be started off from scratch. Uh, speaking of which, I'll actually get into the settings now. And actually, guys, one more thing before I forget. As you can see here, Atlanta Thrashers are 84 overall, so... Um, they're going to be the worst team in the NHL, but again, uh, we're trying to be bad the first season. Um, hopefully we can get Jack Hughes, if not Jack Hughes, maybe Lafreniere the next year. Still some top picks, build around this team. Um, we have to do like a fast rebuild if we do want to win the cup, um, for Kovachuk, so... Uh, it should be interesting and for this franchise mode guys Obviously, we have to sub out a team and we're actually be subbing out my favorite team the Detroit Red Wings I um, will show you guys why in a minute. So uh, Detroit's not too good So it's not gonna make it like any easier or anything like that I think they're 88 overall so we're coming in as the 84 overall also made sure to already move all of uh, the Grand Rapid Griffins Best players to the Red Wings roster. So we're not gonna be getting Zadina. We're not gonna be getting Svechnikov, Cholowski um, I think Ferk and Hicketts were the five total players I removed. Um, the best players I think we're getting from the Grand Rapids Griffins are like Shulak and Pumple. Um, both have pretty much zero value. Um, as you can see here, obviously top players, Wheeler, Buffalo, and Kolbachuk. Not sure if I mentioned it too, but we're playing there in the Phillips Arena. So the uh, reason I'm actually taking off Detroit, guys, like I mentioned, is because the last time Atlanta was in the NHL, Detroit was actually in the Western Conference. Uh, same goes for the Columbus Blue Jackets, but if we subbed them out, we wouldn't have actually had a first round pick in this draft. Uh, not only that, we would have only had like two picks. So I feel like Detroit was a bit more fair. We still have our first round pick from when we obviously do very bad in the first season. Um, I think they might have like an extra second an extra third but considering where we're starting off I think it's pretty fair so I'm actually gonna be uh, mixing up these divisions a bit guys to try and get the southeast division back together so for this I'll actually be swapping Atlanta and Columbus uh, Columbus now in the Atlantic um, as well I'm gonna be sending the two Pennsylvania teams uh, Pittsburgh and Philly to the Atlantic in exchange for the two Florida teams uh, so bring it over Tampa Bay and Florida reason for this again is I'm trying to get the southeast division back together if you guys are unfamiliar with that uh, Atlanta's last year uh, there's three divisions each conference. They play in the Southeast. It had Carolina, Atlanta, Florida, Tampa Bay, and Washington. So uh, this new division is the Southeast plus the three New York teams, uh, Rangers, Islanders, and Devils. I'm Atlantic there, all the Atlantic teams, but they've also added Columbus with the two Pennsylvania teams there in Pittsburgh and Philly. Obviously, there are some decent rivalries there between like Penguins, Islanders, Flyers, Rangers, but... Uh, I think this will be a lot more fun. As we aren't just reviving the Thrashers franchise, we're also mixing up the divisions a bit, so um, it should be kind of cool to see how this plays out. Um, does Tampa still dominate now that they're in the Metro? Um, obviously, too, for this. Um, only things we're going to have turned on are salary cap and computer trades. And right here, guys, a quick look at the settings. As always, try to make this as authentic as possible. So game style, full sim. Um, injuries, though, are off just because they're so annoying time to deal with uh, through the sim. Uh, period length, 20 minutes. Franchise mode there is 10 years. That's probably a max, honestly. Um, I'm thinking 5 to 8, depending how well we do. Um, difficulty there, Superstar. Like I said, draft pick ownership is authentic. Of course, side cap on. Uh, trade difficulty hard. Waivers as well as on. As well, I have Fog of War turned off for this series. Uh, for the Seattle Kraken franchise we did, I think I hid the potentials, but showed the ratings. Uh, some people like Fog of War. Some people hate it. So uh, for this time around, we'll just leave it turned off. Um, another thing I actually forgot to mention, guys, hopefully you watched my custom rosters video the other day. I've actually e made even more changes to that custom roster. Um, I think about like... 20 25 changes to current NHL players as well I've had a few more creative prospects so don't want to spoil that off for you guys right now I think I'm gonna have a video on all the new changes out tomorrow so I'll uh, make sure you uh, keep your eyes on the sub box stay tuned for that uh, next year guys we're actually just gonna start this career um, I'll show you guys the first you know lineups looking like um, kind of the trade values for all of our players and picks and then we're gonna start rebuilding this franchise so no surprise here guys team stats is rebuilder uh, so right now I'm just gonna show you guys the lines you can probably figure them out uh, it's kind of obvious who the first line players are and who the fourth liners are. Uh, so first line here we have Ilya Kovachuk, Brian Little, Blake Wheeler. Honestly, not too bad. Uh, second line there, Danny Heatley, McKenzie, and Evander Kane. So Kane's going to more or less have to carry that second line. Uh, third line there, you have Kunitz, Thorburn, and MacArthur. Uh, Thorburn's actually a winger, but 70 faceoff, 76 overall. Probably going to switch him to center there. And then fourth line, we got Hosa, Slater, and Santala. Now Slater, I didn't even realize this, is a faceoff master apparently. 89 faceoff, so... 
Hopefully that can help out, you know, winning some faceoffs on the PK. Uh, defense here, we got Coborn and Bufflin on the first pair, Bogosian and Enstrom on the second, and then Hainsey and uh, Samala on the third. Goaltending here, obviously letting in the starter, uh, Pearson Wenzel as the backup. Uh, quick look here at the power play, you can see the first unit's actually pretty solid, like that's an NHL first power play unit. Second unit though, is really bad. So we do have some players, we'll be interesting to see whether or not they can carry this team. Also want to show you guys this too, if you like go through, you can see a bunch of the guys drafted by Atlanta Thrashers. So it's like the team still lives on in this game, um, even though they've been gone now for like, what, five years. Um, AHL team here, I'll show you guys quickly. Um, I actually just kept all the Grand Rapids Griffin players in here. Um, also added some of the Thrasher players like Klingberg there, uh, Machek, Berg for uh, defense. I think it's all uh, Griffin's players though. And then goaltending here, so Terry's the starter. And then Eddie Pascal is actually the backup. Uh, so next shot, I'll show you guys the captain C. Um, you can probably guess uh, who's going to be the captain, as well as the two alternates as well. Um, like I said, I want to win a Stanley Cup for Kolbachuk, so I'm going to have him wearing the C there with Wheeler and Bufflin as the two alternates. Um, also, show you guys the offense, defense, and goaltending ratings here. Again, we're going to be making a bunch of trades and stuff, so um, it's not going to last like too long or anything, but um, I am curious to see kind of what our starting point is here compared to maybe when we're you know finally playing that Stanley Cup final. So, 86 offense, 85 defense, 81 goaltending. Um, honestly, not as bad as I expected. Blake Wheeler there doesn't look too bad in the away jersey. Right there is him in the home. And then, of course, we have that alternate. So, I um, also want to show you guys, like I was saying, uh, the trade values for all these players. Uh, I was actually just checking it out, and I didn't realize there's a couple, I guess, bonus assets we have on this team. But um, I'll tell you guys why I think it's pretty fair. So, um, as you can see here, Blake Wheeler is the most valuable, followed by Bufflin. Little and Kolbachuk also have a bit of value. After that, though, not too much. So, I didn't realize Valino and McIsaac were going to be on here as uh, Red Wings have their rights. They're currently in junior. So, um, I wanted to kind of make it even more bare bones than that. But uh, still, I think it's pretty fair. As like I mentioned before, we have two terrible contracts on this team right now, MacArthur and Hosa. Um, basically not gonna be able to move these ones, so we're just gonna hold on to them for the duration. Hosa 5.2 for three years, MacArthur 4.6 for two. Um, so I think that kind of makes up us getting those two prospects. Goalies, we definitely need a goaltender. We have nothing there. We'll probably be uh, active in free agency as well. Uh, draft picks though, like I was saying, we have our own first round pick, which is good. We actually have a couple extra seconds uh, from the Tatar and Nyquist deals, um, an extra fifth. And then in 2020, we actually have an extra second there again and an extra third. So uh, we do have you know, a decent amount of picks. Again, I think this is more fair considering where we're starting off than say we took over Columbus, didn't even have a first round pick. So I'm uh, gonna see what's out there right now on trade market already. I'm um, just gonna try and trade away some of the older vets that I feel like aren't gonna be around this team's playing, but obviously the Wheelers, Buffalo, and the core of this team, uh, I am gonna try and keep together. And actually guys, before we make any trades, I wanna check free agency here, um, see if there's some players that could help us out. Our team's pretty bad, so there should be. Um, unfortunately, I already sent a few days, so I feel like I probably missed out on Nick Shore, who's the best one. 78 overall, uh, still has like medium top nine potential. And yeah, so he's not here. Cam Larry though is, could be an option for us. Um, Joe Colborne as well, 77, but he's 28. Um, again, like these guys will all help us. If say they play a little bit good, they're like a 79 next year. Maybe we can flip them to like a fourth round pick. So I'm um, gonna an offer there on Cam Larry, gonna make an offer on Colborne. I think that's gonna be it. Um, for like NHL players. Bo Bennett actually, 26 years old, so he could grow pretty good offensive stats. He might not be in the next franchise, probably gonna take him out. Same with Nick Shore once I do the uh, Denver alumni uh, franchise. Thomas Jericho's also here, 25, 77. Okay, so I think we have eight spots total, that's four. Let's check um, potential now, see what's available there. Um, so there's a few guys, 20 years old, 62 overall, medium top nine, they're still here too, so. Should we get all these guys? Again, most teams have a bunch of them, but really we could uh, use all the help we can get right now. Um, this guy here is actually the best, 20 and 65. Um, Malinston, um, also Nimeline in there, 20, uh, 60, or sorry, 59, medium top six. We'll also make an offer on Riot here, 21, 61, medium top nine. Um, that's gonna put us right near the max amount, so maybe we'll make a trade first to make sure we have enough space, but uh, should help us out there. Also, I just seen Emerson Edom here, 26, 76, medium bottom six. Again, like he's better than a lot of the guys we have, so uh, why not bring him in? And you know what I just realized, guys? I actually missed a couple alumni players as they were in free agency. Uh, Mark Stewart and Johnny Oduya, the two highest rate defensemen, both played for the Atlanta Thrashers, so I feel like we have to sign them here. Uh, now, one of them would be like our new sixth defenseman. The other one would actually be scratched during the AHL, so not a huge deal. Doubt anyone else makes them a contract offer, but glad I noticed that. Um, can add them to the team, even if they only play a couple games. Um, now, we definitely have to make a trade. I think we're bringing in about 10 guys, but 
Uh, plan on making a trade anyway. So right now, guys, trying to trade a few contracts. We don't really need it. LA Kings for a fourth round pick. Uh, David Pope isn't too bad, but he's like only a 70 overall at 24 years old, which means doesn't have a lot of time left to grow. Low bomb six. Other two guys there, both AHL. Again, just trying to move some contracts out to sign all those free agents. And LA says no to that. Maybe though they'll say yes to like a sixth. Um, also, two I didn't show you guys. Um, I trade away uh, one contract and a few unsigned guys that weren't too good uh, for a fourth round pick from Carolina. Um, okay, that's going through calling up Shulak. I uh, just completely uh, forgot to commentate it as I did it. So um, now, as you can see, 12 contract spots open. Should be able to sign all those free agents who made offers on. So as you can see here, Sompi accepted their offer. Same with Oduya, so that's awesome. Um, have a Thrash alumni back. Uh, Malinston there. Uh, Nimalainen, Riot. Literally, as long as we have the like roster space, all these guys should say yes from there. Um, some accepted earlier than others. Also, to already have a point there uh, against Caroline OT. Caroline is probably going to be like our uh, rival, I assume. Yurko's on the team again, which is pretty cool. Um, Stewart there. Uh, Cam Larry as well. He'll be in the NHL team for sure. Emerson Edom. Joe Colborn. Bo Bennett. Um, I think that's it, honestly. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else. Uh, it's been like a week now, so that's it. So, honestly, the team should have some players there. Obviously, a few of them can still grow. Um, have yet to get our first win, so... So those guys in the lineup and uh, see if we can make it happen. So after all those signings, guys, I want to give you an updated look at the roster. Uh, first line there has not changed. Second line is now Healy, Camilleri, and Kane. So uh, a lot of good shooters on that line. Camilleri is actually a decent center in this game. He's got 80 faceoffs. Uh, third line there, you got Yurko, Colborn, and Bennett, which honestly isn't terrible. Like, ideally, it's a first line AHL or fourth line, but for us, decent third line. Uh, Thorburn, McKenzie, and Kunitz is our fourth line there. Uh, defense, pretty much the exact same. Uh, just have Stuart there as a sixth man now. And I think that's it for changes to the NHL team. Uh, so HL team here, right there, you can see the defense. Now has Oduya on the top pair. I believe that's the only change on the D. Offense, Edom, Turgeon, and Pumple's kind of sick first line. MacArthur's now down there. I figured why not bury his salary. Helps with trades and stuff. Uh, same goes for Hosa. Um, so a lot of like HL alumni, or sorry, Thrashers alumni just on this AHL team. Uh, should be fun to see if the Griffins can actually put anything together. So we'll probably sim for a little bit here now after all those Freedom signings. Um, I didn't really see very many good trades out there. Pretty much all of our players with value I want to keep, like your Wheelers, your Bufflins, your Kovachucks, and everyone else doesn't really have much. So kind of in a tough spot. So just sim to January 1st, guys. As you can see, coming off a big 7-2 win against the Senators. Um, we're actually 500, and we're just below 500 there, 16, 18, and 5. So uh, playing pretty well since our 0, 3, and 2 start. I think signing all those free agents definitely helped out. Now, I haven't made any trades. I'm thinking I'll probably just wait till the deadline, as at the deadline you can make um, trades easier with like the lower salary cap. Um, also, too, there will hopefully be uh, some teams that are really trying to make that playoff push, maybe willing to give up a bit more for our veterans, um, maybe even some other teams that have prospects on the block to make those trades happen. So I'll uh, so send the next couple months here. Hopefully we actually start losing a bit more because we're definitely not winning the Stanley Cup or anything. So I want the best odds of that first overall. And we'll see if we can maybe pick up some nice picks and prospects at the deadline. So we're now at the trade deadline, guys. And check this out. We actually have a positive record, 28, 26, and 7. Uh, surprisingly doing better than the AHL team. I thought it'd be the other way around. So we're now check where we are in the standings, also who our leading score is. Um, after the first five games, I believe it was Bufflin. I don't know if it'll still be him. It's Kovalchuk. Okay, there we go. Only nine goals. Um, apparently Kovalchuk became a playmaker. 34 assists there. 43 points. Not too bad. And we're actually fourth place in the division. Uh, doing better than Florida, Carolina, Devils, and Islanders. Um, how far back of a wildcard spot are we? We're only... A win back of wildcard spot. That's insane. Um, they do have a game in hand, but the fact that it's even that close um, is pretty crazy. I want to check really quick. I'm like 99% sure um, Kovalchuk is a sniper. So I'm really curious. Bufflin's got 20 goals. How does Bufflin have more goals than Kovalchuk? Yeah, Kovalchuk is a sniper. Little there, 39. Wheeler, uh, Wheeler 38. Heatley's got 30. He's got 15 and 19. Not quite as good as 15 or 7. We'll take it. Kane, 29. Camilleri. So... I don't know, somehow this team's finding a way. I'm um, still going to try and trade away a few guys here for some picks and prospects, but I mean, I'm not going to, you know, trade away Kovalchuk or anything, so the fact we could still make the playoffs is kind of hilarious. So right here, guys, trying to trade Braden Colborn to the Winnipeg Jets for a second round pick. Uh, he's on an expiring deal. I doubt he resigns with us, so might as well get something for him. He is a top pair defenseman for us, but uh, we'll be okay, I'm sure. We'll see what Winnipeg says here. And trade's going through. We're calling up Oduya, so we still have another Thrasher player coming up. Also, if you guys are wondering, unfortunately, like, the only way to do this, there are duplicates in the game. Obviously, Winnipeg's going to have a few there uh, with Wheeler, um, with Bufflin, with Little. So, um, in case you guys are wondering, yeah, that is the case. Um, it's kind of cool, I guess, to see how ours do compared to theirs, but 
Uh, really no way to avoid that. And I'm trying to make another trade here, guys. This one is with the New York Rangers for Condre Miller. Um, obviously one of our created players, pretty solid. 19 years old, 68 overall, medium top four. Um, Halverson's just there for the roster spot, offering them Hainsey and Kunitz. They want them both, both expiring deals. And then a couple second rounders in 2020. Uh, neither of them are our second rounder. That way, in case we need it for like an RFA qualifying offer, value's pretty much equal. They want all our stuff, all their stuff's on the block. Hopefully this goes through. And trades accepted, we're calling up Shulak and MacArthur. So there we go. I feel like we just got a solid defensive prospect there. Now, they actually also had Krasov on the block, um, as I'll show you guys here. Or never mind, they had him on the block. I guess uh, they only wanted to trade away one prospect. So um, they had him, actually, and Anderson. I feel like, though, with Valina, we didn't really need Anderson. We can never have too many defensemen, though. Maybe Miller and McIsaac's like our future top pair. Uh, Krasov, though, you can see his value there. Pretty much only way we got that trade to go through was offering up uh, one of our top three in Wheeler, or basically a top two in Wheeler or Bufflin, or a first round pick, or like five second rounders, which for a rebuilding team, as much as I want Krasov, I felt wasn't worth it. So I think I'm done making trades, guys. Just look at the lines after the deadline. I believe the top nine is completely intact. Fourth line's a bit different. Thorburn, McKenzie, MacArthur. Uh, defense, obviously, is a bit different as well. Oduya and Shulak, they're on the bottom pair. Uh, goalies haven't changed, though. AHL. Pretty much the same. On defense, though, Condre Miller have on the top pair. Hopefully, plays well there with Mikkelrath. Older guy, a bit more defensive, so maybe that'll help him out. Miller obviously has some offensive upside. Um, also, too, I actually have Halverson as the backup. He's not too bad. I didn't realize. Uh, 22 years old, 67 overall, low, or low backup potential. Like, for a free add-on, there definitely you know could be a worse player. So, I'll send the next month and a half here, see if we somehow make it to the playoffs. Kind of hope we don't, though, just to have a shot at Jack Hughes. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, so it's now the end of this season, and check this out. Finish the record of 40, 33, and 9, so 89 points. Honestly, that's like an outside shot at the playoffs. AHL team there, exactly 500. Let's see if we squeaked in. And <laughs> are you kidding me? Atlanta Thrashers in their very first year back in the NHL make the playoffs. I can't believe that. Um, actually benefited here from being in the Southeast Division or, you know, the new Metro, which was actually the case a while, you know, back in the day. Washington, I think, would make it with not very many points. Uh, Tampa, though, still wins the division. Rangers second. Speaking of Washington, they actually below us. Same with Carolina, Florida. Devils and Islanders. So kind of crazy. Uh, Kovalchuk there, 69 points. Nice. Actually had 52 assists. Not sure why he's more of a playmaker here. I've got him on his off wing, so like he should just be sniping, but um, whatever. Uh, Bufflin went off this year, 58 points. Wheeler 57 is not bad. Little 55, that's a very good year for him. I could see him going up to like 84. Uh, Heatley 48. We'll see if he retires or not. Definitely didn't want to trade with the deadline, but I mean, almost 50 points for the All-Stars of 78. is kind of insane. He had more than Evander Kane. Uh, well, Bennett there not doing too bad. Like all of our free agent signings honestly helped out quite a bit. And we would have signed them even earlier, like... You know, maybe uh, win a couple more games there in the first five or whatever. Um, so overall, like, really surprised by this team. I'm not even sure if I'd say happy because the whole point was to, you know, lose for Hughes. So whatever. Um, Letton in there, pretty good stats. 0.908 save percentage, 2.78 goals against. Peterson Wenzel actually also positive. I mean, neither of those save percentages are honestly that great. Uh, neither are the goals against. So this team thrived, I guess, off just playing close games. Kind of like scoring by committee. Uh, we'll take a look here and see the lean score was the entire league. And that goes to Tarasenko, 99 points, one shy there of 100. Kessel, 98. Uh, looking through here, Ryan O'Reilly's kind of surprising, 83. Uh, Debrinkat there, 82, obviously with that new update to 86. Uh, he just goes off. Probably have him on the first line as well um, with Patrick Kane. And actually, let me check and see how our uh, AHL team did. I assume no one really did that well. Pumple, 44, is our best player. So yeah, really nothing to get too excited about there. Um, also check the standings here. Not curious really with the AHL team. We actually finished last apparently with 500 record. Um, so we know we finished third in the division. Um, we're in the Eastern Conference. Who cares? They'll just go to the league. Colorado actually wins the league. I mean, McKinnon's franchise potential. They got McCarr. That makes sense. Tampa, Pittsburgh all had 108. How many uh, teams here? So nine teams, 100 plus points. Kind of crazy. Um, let's see. So 13 and up, then Nashville gets screwed, Anaheim, Vegas, all these teams in the West, Philly squeaks in, same with Columbus, and then we squeak in as the 20th ranked team. Oh man, so yeah, we're the worst team to make the playoffs. Imagine if we go on a run here though, that'd be kind of insane. Um, Montreal actually finished last in the league, I can't believe that. Carey Price is still there. Um, we actually like only upgraded guys, the most recent roster update, made like Kokinemi and Pauline um, medium elite and uh, medium top six, so uh, very surprised to see that honestly. 
Uh, I guess now we'll just get started with the playoffs. Start to make that trade with New York for Condre Miller. Of course, that's who we're playing in the first round. Uh, Kreider Zbigniewicz and Buchnevich there on the first line. Fast, Strom, Nemestikov. I don't know how this team did so well. Like, that's not that good. Um, defense here, I guess, you know what? They only finished second in a weak division. Um, so it's not, like, super impressive. Uh, Lundqvist there. Georgiev, of course, too. Um, they have just Yorkin, who I boosted to medium elite because he did sign. Um, so their goalie situation is pretty good. Like, they have an elite goalie in Lundqvist, and they have a couple nice young goalies there um, to kind of replace him once he retires. Um, let's see what happens here. First round, New York Rangers. Obviously, uh, first two games, they're going to be in Madison Square Garden. So, I mean, we're not even supposed to be here in the playoffs, so no matter what happens, it's you know, it is what it is. First game, first period. Evander Kane gets one on Lundqvist. Uh, Kane gets another. Bushnovich and Chittlebo both answer back. And then we're going to OT. Yurko scores for us to be injected for them. And in OT, we have Thorburn there as the OT winner. Imagine uh, picking him for like the Bucci OT uh, challenge. All right, so win the first game. That's kind of nuts. If we make it to the second round, I'm trying to remember, like, did Atlanta Thrashers ever make it to a second round in their entire history? I don't think they did. Uh, I, I have to, like, you know, check, but that'd be kind of amazing. Uh, Chittle there gets one for them. Nothing in the second. And there we go. Uh, Shulak, actually. Pushes this to OT, and unfortunately an OT fast there gets the winner, so all tied up there, 1-1. So here you go guys, game number three in Atlanta. Uh, they've waited five years for hockey, I don't even know how many years for playoff hockey, so crowd should be pretty pumped up here. First period, and there we go, Vander Kane again, he's playing really well these playoffs. Um, second period, and we get one from Kolbachuk. Third period, uh, another one there from Dustin Bufflin, so kind of three of the bigger name players all getting it done. Up 2-1 here against the Rangers. Like I said, when I was looking at their team, it really didn't impress me. Like, the Rangers are definitely a bubble team. Uh, now, we're more of a bubble team. We have one line, uh, one defenseman, and really not great goaltending. So, how we're beating them here, I have no idea. But, uh, let's see if we can keep it up. So, first game, first period, nothing there. Outshot them by 10. Second period, still nothing. So, defensive game. And look at this. We come alive in the third. Buffalo and Wheeler and Bo Bennett. Honestly, I have no idea... Um, how this team is getting it done. Pretty insane, to be honest. So, uh, one win away now from the second round of the playoffs. Um, we're obviously going back to New York here, but this is insane. Like, I don't know what's going on here with the Sim. So, game number five, first period. No scores again. Second period, another defensive battle. Going to OT. And there you go, Joe Colborn. The third and the fourth line are coming through here in these OTs get it done we beat the rangers in five that's insane and in the second round of the playoffs guys we're up against the columbus blue jackets so i think that means there's a chance they actually beat tampa again in the first round in this sim we'll have to check the playoff tree at the end um doesn't look like there's any changes at all out uh, of that forward group defense yeah it's also the exact same i mean columbus already has a good team to start off with so really no reason to make a change for them plus don't really have a lot to work with obviously trade away a bunch of their picks in real life if they trade away any more prospects they're pretty much gonna have none so Let's see what happens here in the second round. I mean, two teams that have never made it past the second round, I believe. Again, this might be the first time ever Atlanta's in the second round. I'm definitely going to Google after this video. So, first period, Kovachuk, Dubois each get one. Second period there, Kane gets one. And nothing in the third. So, we win the first game against Columbus. That's awesome. All right, guys. So, I kept talking about whether or not the Thrashers have ever made it out of the first round. I had to check. And not only have the Thrashers never made it out of the first round, they've never won a playoff game in their entire franchise history. They've only made the playoffs once. Uh, they did win the division that year, but they were swept in the first round by none other than the New York Rangers. So we just got some pretty fitting revenge here, actually winning that first game in OT. That's their first ever, you know, franchise playoff win. Kind of awesome. Um, as well, too, I noticed they actually uh, relocated back in 2011. So it's been eight years now, which is kind of crazy. Uh, time seems to just fly by. So I'm um, happy to not only bring the Thrashers their first ever, you know, franchise playoff win, but also their first series win. First time in round two here. So whether it's us or Columbus that move on, it'll be a first for both franchises. Basically just playing with house money at this point is what I'm saying. As this is already the best season the Thrashers have ever had. Although, again, the goal is to bring, you know, a Stanley Cup to Atlanta, not just, you know, a second round playoff series. I'm, I still can't believe we got in the first uh, year sim. So down one nothing there in the first. We do get one from Vander Kane, still down 2-1, to one, and uh, Dubinsky there just puts it away. So 1-1 uh, one, one there after the first two, but honestly not too bad. Without a doubt, still anyone's series, so uh, game number three here is in Columbus. If we can take a game here, obviously that'd be really nice. Uh, so first period, we get one from Wheeler. Second period, no score. 
and third period no score. So Letton in there puts up a shutout. Honestly, he had like pretty average uh, stats in the regular season, but uh, so far through these playoffs, I'd say he's been playing really well. Uh, I was gonna say pretty well, and then I like took a second look. I mean, I didn't even realize this. I don't know how. Like sometimes you just think about all sorts of things while commentating. He got three straight shutouts there in the first round to get us the series win. And before that, he only let in one goal in the second game and three in the first which isn't too bad. Like, you know, obviously the nerves first uh, playoff win. Like, that's insane. So four shutouts through eight games. Shut out every other game. Kerry Lightning is just on another level right now. I don't even know how. Uh, I mentioned in my custom roster video, I like lowered his rating. Even his potential actually lowered by a bit. So who knows? Game number four here. Nothing in the first. Um, Duchesne there gets one in the second. We tie it up though. Camilleri forces to OT. All right, and unfortunately Borkstrand there gets the OT winner. So still a uh, very close series here, tied up 2-2. Imagine though, like at this point, I wanted like to lose for Hughes. At this point, I just want the Cinderella run. Imagine we could go all the way. Like that would just be absolutely insane. So gainer five. Oh no, down two. Panarin and Borkstrand. Nothing in the second. Oh, okay. So. Columbus starting to come alive here. They had 37 shots that game. Uh, kind of uh, got blown out there, really, in that 4-1 loss. Have to win the next two here. Again, Kerry Letton has been playing really well. So we definitely need him to bounce back in this game. So game number six, do or die. Nothing in the first or the second. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there we go. Panarin scores the lone goal. I mean, Letton was trying 40 shots. I think it was 39 to be exact by Columbus. They don't get a goal till late in the third. Are you kidding me? So... Honestly, I think we have to bring Lightning back next year, at least as a backup goalie. He gave it his all. Uh, gave the Thrashers their first ever playoff win, first ever series win. Uh, gotta be happy with that, even though we don't get Jack Hughes. I didn't realize just how bad that franchise was before relocating, so uh, kind of cool to see, especially to that revenge like I mentioned on the Rangers. Uh, it's pretty awesome. And the large results are in, guys. New York Islanders there picking first overall. They're going to get Jack Hughes. Buffalo second gets Capo Caco. Uh, Vancouver third really could go anywhere. That's definitely where the draft opens up. Um, I was hoping we'd be in this draft lottery, but I mean, we're setting franchise records in our first year, so can't be too upset. I guess we'll go for Lafreniere next year, unless, of course, we're back in the playoffs again, in which case, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting uh, rebuild, to say the least. I'm also going to show you guys that draft class. I um, haven't touched on it yet. We'll actually be doing the draft, though, in the next episode. Um, this one's probably already long enough. Uh, so Hughes obviously going to go first. Then you have Kako. Put Coles in there. They have ranked third. Um, him, Cousins, Doc, and Byram are all 76. You got Caulfield there up high. Turcotte, Boldy, Zegris. Again, did my best here uh, to kind of edit this draft and make it as realistic and authentic to real life as possible. These two here, Croston and Finneganov, definitely are uh, created players. Again, I'm medium lead at 11, though. That'd be like a steal. Byram always goes late, even though he's a 76. I'm not sure if it's because he's a defenseman or what, but a very good value there at 13. Definitely a guy we can maybe trade up for. Broberg as well. Krebs. Like, there's a lot of guys we could get here. Uh, even, like, looking down through it, like, Brink. Um, as well, too, we need a goalie. Uh, Spencer Knight usually goes late first, early second. He's got a leap potential, so uh, we can make some plays here. Uh, pool in there, they have his little gems, so... I'm um, going to be excited to do that draft. Um, also, I'll show you guys here just what happened uh, with all the playoffs. Like I mentioned, ooh, that's actually awesome. So Marion Hosa retires, uh, no longer have his contract. It was like $5 million for three more years. Uh, Santillette, too, is a player of ours. I don't really care too much about him, but um, definitely would like to sign Marion Hosa as a scout. So he's a C-. minus. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, we don't have, like, owner mode turned on. Uh, he also is, though, an A+, plus in the AHL North, so... Uh, maybe he'll help us out there. And St. is actually not bad either. Uh, C overall, A minus, H Atlantic. So uh, I'll give him a deal as well. Um, now, like I said, guys, I want to show you the playoff tree. You can see everything that happened. Also, take a look at the awards for this year. Um, as you can see right there, Dallas Stars are Stanley Cup champions. They're one game away uh, from the conference final. Couldn't make it happen. Kane there, led our team in points uh, in the playoffs. 8th and 11, obviously. He was coming in clutch uh, quite a bit. So take a look at the playoff tree. Um, so let's see, Stars beat Coyotes in 6, surprise they made it, uh, Sharks in 6, Blues in 5, um, so that's kind of cool, uh, the Blues are there like they should be, and Sharks were pretty close, and then they actually beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in 7, um, did Columbus beat Tampa, they did, but they beat them in 6, let them get a couple wins, and then of course, uh, let's see, Toronto sweeps Bruins, not quite what happened in real life. Beat the Flyers there, then the Blue Jackets, the conference final. Obviously, too, with us mixing up the divisions in the East, we're going to have some different playoff matchups, which I think is pretty awesome. I uh, still can't believe like we set records for the uh, Thrashers franchise in our first year. 
Uh, so right there is look at all the team awards, already know those. Player awards there, Tarasenko, we know we got the Art Ross, Kessel with the heart, um, Riley, James Norris, Kessel, Lady Bing, Peterson, Calder, Bishop, Khan, Smythe, Quick there at the Vesna, Varlamov got the William M. Jennings, CC, Bill Masterson, Bergeron, Selkie, Kessel, Ted Lindsay, Tarasenko, Marisa Shard. So really no surprise in terms of the awards. AHL, uh, Stockton Heat there won the Calder Cup. We were like last in the division, so obviously no team award. Player awards, Tolvin in most points. He's going to grow a ton. Wallstrom MVP. He always gets most goals, except for when we did the Islanders Cup or bust for whatever reason. Also got outstanding rookie. Uh, Corby Salo there actually is in the AHL because they have Kincaid. So I doubt... Um, yeah, we didn't get any AHL awards. Sorokin, uh, lowest goals against. So the Islanders do have some hope there, even after finishing last in the league. But that's going to be it, guys, for this uh, first episode, first season. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, it did not go the way I expected, but I'm still happy that, you know, we are able to bring some light, I guess, to those Thrashers fans. They waited so long, finally got that first playoff win and series win. So we'll see what we can do with the draft. Definitely going to try and get creative, get some good value, as we don't have, obviously, one of the lottery picks. But I think we can make some uh, magic happen. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave the thumbs up. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, please do that. And stay tuned for the next episode, guys. Uh, very excited for this series to be underway now. Uh, hopefully you guys are too. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.